Good evening, everyone. Uh, it is Monday night, and that means it's a great time to think about cutting down sprawl character sheets. Woohoo! So there is a convention happening in uh, Lewiston um, this weekend. Sorry, I just got to always have to mute myself. Um, so there is a um, there is a comic convention happening this weekend in Lewiston, Maine. Uh, it is the Great Falls Comic Expo. This is the first one they've done. I have no idea what it's going to be like, neither do they. Uh, but um, I'm going to be there and I'm going to be running short demos of the sprawl. I have no idea what the audience is going to be like. Um, so I will be drastically cutting down the character sheets uh, so that people can, you know, just get into a really quick couple of scenes and then walk away and do their own thing if they are so inclined if they want to know a little bit more then um i can just tell them verbally and they want to see it in play that's the that's the goal so um i've never done this with a powered by the apocalypse game before but i've seen it done at conventions not with powered by the apocalypse games um so i'm pretty confident that i'll be able to pull it off uh, i just want to reduce the overload of information because this is, for example, what the hunter sheet looks like right now uh, on the screen there. Um, and as you know, this is just one side of the hunter sheet. And we scroll down, there's this whole other side, right? So that's two sides of information. If this is a full-on con slot, even a two-hour con slot, like this is a manageable amount of information. You don't need the back side that much. Um, the front side has all the information you need on it. But there's still a lot of stuff, right? That's uh, one of the um, one of the consequences of uh, the way that I design games, where I design them um, from the perspective of a writer, not from the perspective of a layout person. So uh, thanks again, as always, anytime I mention this to Aaron Brown, who managed to fit the extremely verbose uh, playbooks onto um, two sides of a sheet. So with that in mind, what I am planning to do is take this two-sided thing that is great for full-on play, but not so good if I want to get them in and out of the game in five or ten minutes, right? And I'm going to cut it down to this. So this is what I've done for the Hunter already. Um, you'll immediately see that there's a few changes I've made. I'll just flick back to it. So this is the full one name and looks, list of options on the back, stats, directives, harm, cyberware, links, contacts, moves. Drastically cut down the moves. I've removed, removed all move choice and just gone with the basic ones. I've cut down the gear, put that on the front page. I've put the uh, pick lists for the name and characters on the front. Uh, I've done away with directives. Five minutes, ten minutes, we're not going to get to those. Um, that's just something extra that will get in the way. Um, just made the cyberware choice for them. Uh, I'll have links because if there's two or three people who want to demo together, then they can just quickly write down their names. We won't do the links phase or anything, but they can write down their names and add in a plus one with them all. Um, just to show that there is interaction between characters, and if we're doing a five or ten minute game, there is very likely there will be helping. Helping comes up a lot. Um, and then I had enough space uh, once I cut down the contacts area, which probably doesn't even need to be, be there, to be honest. Um, but for the hunter, it's possibly useful to uh, jam the hunter picture and blurb thing from here. So my intention is to do this with every sheet. And I should uh, wave hi to the people in chat who uh, I see there. Um, so hi Carl, hi Larry Nom, hi Ice Bear House. Um, while I was just describing what I'd done here, I immediately realized that I have a move right here that is a prime move to be removed for this kind of situation. Perfectly reasonable move for the hunter in a normal situation. Uh, it all fits together. You're the master of making connections between seemingly unrelated events. At the start of a mission, roll edge. Brr, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. At the start of a mission, that's going to be like five minutes, 10 minutes long, that is probably, that is that is the wrong kind of move. This is a move that gives you hold that lets you put things together over the course of a game. That's not gonna be a thing. 
So right away, I see that I'm going to have to modify this. Um, so one disadvantage of um, doing this as I'm doing this with you guys is that I don't actually have InDesign on this computer. So I can't, um, nor do I have the ability to edit PDFs on this computer. So I can't actually edit this here, but I'm going to make a note. I have paper and because, you know, I'm pretty old school, actually, when it comes to doing things on paper. I like like doing things digitally, uh, and I'm doing most of my writing on Google Docs these days. Uh, and I use other things like that a lot, but um, when it comes to editing, I am definitely a printed out and scribble on it type of guy. So I'm just crossing that off right now, like that. Um, and I'm going to replace that with something because everybody should start with a couple of moves and then they have, as well as the basic moves, something like cool that is theirs alone to do. Um, so if I go back to the other one, the first thing I need to do is choose something to replace that. Um, so ear to the ground is good for circulating amongst people and picking up information feel like I want something that is good for like finding people straight away. Um, big game hunter could be good actually. Big game hunter is actually really good because big game hunter is exactly the kind of um, move that I could immediately start a five minute session with. Like, okay, so you're on the hunt for someone. Uh, let's just start from the point where you've sprung the trap. So roll edge. Okay, you've got a seven plus. Right, well, you've got them trapped and the only way out is through you. Here they come. What do you do? That's like straight into it. Uh, if they get a 10 plus on that, then maybe that's a little trickier. On a 10 plus, I guess we're now in an, uh, an interrogation scene of some sort, um, which may or may not be good. Um, or if they attempt to escape, they you roll edge. So that's a good chance to you know mix it up with them as they run away so i'm gonna write down here big game hunter uh yeah uh he also the pen is mightier than the indesign uh in this particular case uh no disrespect meant to uh any indesign users and there are many of you so yeah, so this is what I've this is what I've done. Uh, looks to me like Big Game Hunter is a four line move, and I'm taking out a four line move, so that shouldn't change my layout at all. So that's the Hunter done. Um, so what I am gonna do, and I welcome um, input from anybody watching the stream, is go through the rest of the playbooks and scribble on them in the same way. Uh, this is not going to be like the visualness of this is not going to be wonderful but um we'll get to talk about these things as we go and just looking through my the way that i printed them out it separated them out I, I usually print them back to back but i didn't on this occasion and they're kind of all mixed up uh but one of the things i was thinking about is whether i want to give these sort of pre-generated characters a name or not um or whether i want them to make that up and i think given it's just a little bit of circling i think it's worth the investment and in time to have them make it up it shouldn't take more than a minute i think to pick one of those that said every time i made a character over the past uh, i went to a gateway in los angeles a couple of weekends ago and Every time I made a character, I spent like half an hour trying to think of a name. Um, I was not, I was not firing in all name cylinders that day. That's for sure. Um, I keep thinking of cool names um, and like seeing cool names on Twitter or places like that, and and then thinking that's going to be totally the next name of my whatever character, and then completely forgetting them. So I need to come up with some sort of better organization system. Maybe it's a a notepad note in my phone or something like that um a narrow list of names for inspiration yeah i could do that and this is one of the things i was thinking about i don't know exactly what the audience is going to be the previous convention i've been to in maine was very anime focused so um i feel like going off 
pretty like common media properties is going to be the way I'm going to sell them. So Blade Runner 2049 has got a lot of buzz at the moment. So when it comes to the Hunter, I will say this is like Dickhead from Blade Runner or Blade Runner 2049, right? Though that should trigger with a few people. Um, also for the Infiltrator, I will probably refer to Ghost in the Shell as a major like influence um, and one that is likely to resonate. Um, Larry Nom, yes, I do intend to make these available. Um, I don't know exactly, uh, I'm sure I'll probably just put them up on my website. Um, I do like, whenever I do something like this and I make a kind of like slimmed down version for con play, I do like to put it up. Um, I feel like a lot of people have got a lot of fun out of the downtown, down, downtown data heist, which I had originally done for much the same way I was running uh, at Games on Demand at Gen Con and those are two hour slots. Um, and so I wanted to have a two hour version that I could that I could play and the Downtown Data Heist does that pretty well. And actually the Downtown Data Heist, if I took out character generation, because I usually do character generation in that two hour slot, um, I could probably run that in an hour. So I might offer that at the, this convention as well. If I we can get some signups, we'll see. There isn't a rigorous, um, uh, uh, role-playing schedule um, at this con. It's only one day. It's like from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. If any of you happen to be near Lewiston, Maine, then you should come on down and say hi. Um, yeah, Icebro House says a lot of us take a long time for names. And that's that's true. Uh, I certainly just noticed that I was the one who was taking the longest at this in this particular <laughs> recent con. Um, and this is why one of the reasons I really like the name lists on uh, Powered by the Apocalypse games. And some people say, oh, I don't want name lists. I don't want to have to choose from them. And that's fine. But you, don't, you never have to choose from them. That's always an optional thing. Um, but there are a lot of people for whom they really do just want a kind of list of names they can pick from. Um, and yeah, totally allowing people to use their own is definitely the way to go. Uh, hello, Steel Seraph. Uh, so, where was I? I think I'm going to scroll up to the top of this document. Let me flick back to this one. So I've replaced, so I've like, fiddled with the Hunter as you can see, and I am switching in um, a different move. And as you probably also see, I've tried to pick options that are kind of iconic. Um, so for the Hunter, I looked at what the Hunter had and went with Cyber Eyes as being the most kind of like cyberpunky and cool. Um, I was tempted by uh, skill wires, but skill wires is way more complicated to explain. So that was, I, I just kicked that to the curb for this. Um, and I also chose some gear that seemed just pretty indicative. There's no need to, in this kind of environment, there's no need to, um, go through the hassle of explaining what all this stuff means. Um, if there's only a couple of them, uh, and it's relatively quick, I can keep track of what they have. And if they're in a situation, I can say, hey, if you want to take care of this guy quietly, you have a hand taser, you could use that. Um, and these are more self-explanatory. If they have to make choices, that's when they have to kind of know what the rules are. And so I'm eliminating the choice so I can, so I'm also eliminating the uh, rule requirements. I guess the rules, knowledge, explanation requirements. Um, while I am here though, actually, I realized that I should put in some stats cause I'm going to put the stats in and then I'm not going to have, I'm not going to explain all the stats to them and then have them, um, make, make their choices and put things in spaces because that's just extra time that I can dispense with. Um, it's a hunter. The game says your edge should be plus two or plus one. That was a good idea. Hamish, why don't you do that? Edge plus two. Um, Given them big game hunter, big game hunter has uses edge and mm, substitutes in for meat. So I'm thinking our kind of default hunter is that kind of more, I don't know, a kind of like old school decade type. Um, so let's say that they are good at talking to people plus one style um be good at research plus one mind 
the uh, okay with the cyberware no hmm I think they yeah let's say they're okay with their cyberware plus zero synth they're okay uh, at um, with meat and I'm gonna give them minus one call which is probably not option op optimal for a hunter but it could make for some fun play especially since they have all of the investigative ones at bonuses right and they get a substitute uh, with big game hunter they can substitute um, edge for meat so that kind of covers their meat deficiency meat deficiency meat deficiency is my KMFDM cover band okay yeah Larry Nom says the stripped down playbooks would work really well with making the once cat overlay easier for one shots that is definitely true um, and I will oh, yeah I will probably make the once cat available for play in these um, in these demos because uh, being able to play a cat is really grabby for cat people so yes because the idea of these is they should be like punchy and iconic but give you an indication that there is more and you can be flexible with it okay so this then is my hunter plus two edge plus one style plus one mine plus zero synth plus zero meat and minus one call which is kind of the way i see decad to be honest like i don't see him as a guy who's particularly good under pressure um i see him as a little bit bumbling and fumbly uh but getting there anyway uh kind of tripping and falling and accidentally solving everything so that rook can rook how i can have his uh his uh, time in the rain as it were and maybe that's a little bit harsh but there you go <clears throat> so going to the driver um there's the back of the driver do i want to go to the driver next i'm not going to go to the driver next the driver's going to be hard uh, i have to make vehicles let's go to the fixer <laughs> okay so the fixer has well, i'm going to scrap off directives as before you're going to move the looks over there that will be that side of the sheet the fixer for cyberware has cyber eyes cyber comms and a neural interface with data storage and for moves they have hustling and i know people hustling i am probably going to reduce down somewhat because that's not really that's not really a good move for this kind of situation but it is a great starting point um so i'll have that on hand and i'll i think i'll ask if somebody chooses to take a fixer so what does your what does your crew do and say okay are they surveillance debt collection petty theft deliveries brokering deals technical work pimping addictive substances then they can choose and then i can immediately launch into some sort of problem with that business so I don't need hustling as one of which is one of their two sort of standard moves. I'm not going to include that. Um, I know people in this kind of mm, there probably won't be very much new contact introduction. I'll leave I know people in there. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, one more. If I put in backup, I have to explain how gangs work so let's not do that um balls in the air is about crew chromed no deal of a lifetime to sell things facetime is about face-to-face -face conversations that might be all right hard to find no hmm maybe reputation when you meet someone of consequence they might have heard of you roll edge on a hit say what they know about you on a 10 plus take plus one forward with them on a miss the mc will decide what they've heard about you if anything hmm. 
That might be good. It really doubles down on what the fixer is about. That is talking to people and having interesting interactions with them. So I'm going to say I know people and reputation. So with those in mind, um, those are style and edge. So I'll make style plus one and edge plus two. Sorry, the other way around. Style plus two and edge plus one. Um, cyber eyes, cyber comms, or neural interface with data storage. I think cyber comms. I think that's good for a fixer with those moves. Knowing people, talking to people, getting contact with people. Hey there, drum boy. How's it going? I love all those people with Adam's um, Adam's uh, little wavy icons. Those are the shit. It's like Adam is in my feed, like waving at me with his pink hair. Which is the dream, right? Um, okay, so those two moves. So those are a little bit longer than their moves on the Hunter, so that might involve a little bit more space, which might push contacts out of the way. Hmm, not sure about that. Maybe not. Maybe I'll shove contacts over to underneath harm. There might be space for that. We'll see. Now I'm now I'm facing the problem that I subjected upon Aaron, so vengeance is his. Um for gear, they just get to choose one, so I'll just say they have a holdout pistol. This kind of fixer build seems kind of like uh a little bit more talky than less action-y. Uh, they can have armored clothing, which is a little bit complicated, but easy enough for me to explain. And they already have cybercom, so they don't need encrypt and communications gear. I also cross out trauma dooms. They can have a flashy ride, let's say, and they'll let, they can choose that, whether it's a motorcycle, a sports car, a speedboat. Um, I'm also cutting out the requirement to do the um, cyberware questions. Um, because that's very cool, but I feel like I can just talk about them, talk about that with, with people who might be taking the demo. Um, I don't necessarily need to have that on the sheet. It requires a lot more creative stuff in a kind of structured way. And I feel like I want to encourage people to be freeform creative in this exercise. Um, so I think that's it for the fixer. No, I need stats. Uh, so edge and style, um, they get to roll synth for assess. Assess is edge, so they're probably not going to want to do that anyway. Let's give them plus zero synth. Um, give this guy minus one meat, plus one call, and plus zero mind. So he is a lover, not a fighter. Or she is a lover, not a fighter. Or they are a lover, not a fighter. However they want to roll. So there is what I'm going to do there. So that should fit on one page. There'll be a little bit less gear than the Hunter, so that will let um, the slightly more room for moves take up some space. We'll see how that goes. <clears throat> so interesting to note so far that out of the two I've done, um, I haven't kept the two base moves for each of them because there's something about one of them in each case that makes it more suited to long-term play than short-term play. And long-term play being like <laughs> two to four hours in this case. Um, yes, uh, drum away. A lot of people heard about the sprawl from Adam. Um, thank you, Adam. Um, also check out my sweet poster. If you know, I've got this for the, for the booth. Totally sweet. Can cover the, cover the window blinds, which are otherwise unremarkable and not cyberpunk enough. Um, yes, I am making pre-gens for a con that is this coming up this weekend uh, where I want to be able to run five to ten minute uh, demos of the game. So super cut down pre-gens. So that's the fixer and that's the hunter. Still going to go past the driver because that's a lot more work. <laughs> um... Infiltrator. So this is the one that I am thinking. That's the remains of the back of the hunter. I got it. Yeah. Um, infiltrator. Okay. So for the infiltrator, I'm definitely thinking something along the lines of the major from um, 
Ghost in the Shell. Um, so I am, let me look straight at the cyberware. Cyber eyes, cyber ears, neural interface, skill wise, synthetic nerves. So it's gotta be synthetic nerves, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, synthetic nerves all the way. Um, <laughs> Infiltrator has plus two call, plus one meat, because it's, she's um, definitely combat capable. Plus one edge. Oh no, synth. Uh, synthetic nerves doesn't actually require good synth. She should have good synth though. Hmm, well, plus zero. Uh, plus zero style, minus one mind. So she's not so much of a researcher. Um, yeah, crazy cut down. Yeah, because this is for like five to ten minutes. I want to be able to put this in, uh, in someone's hand and not have them have to make like have them have to make cool choices about who their character is but not mechanical ones and i don't want to have to i don't want to have to explain the mechanics to people um so yeah those, these are crazy cut down um yeah and if you're playing a full game then an hour and a half to make the world is certainly within the bounds of my experience um because once you start getting talking about world generation i find uh people have a lot of cool ideas about the way they want their cyberpunk future to be uh, so it can take it take a lot of time um i basically had a campaign in the 2000s when transhuman space the gurps game came out i ran it with d20 d20 moderns which whatever um uh but most of that game was spent talking about the technology of the game so i feel like near future games have that tendency and starting up the sprawl is certainly no different um yeah and uh so drummer boy that's awesome special place in my heart for the sprawl since it allowed me to get paid for writing synthy cyberpunk music which is a sweet deal yeah i love your synthy cyberpunk music as well it's badass um yeah steel serif if you haven't checked it out you should totally check out uh uh, drama boys um uh like videos and you have those music you have that online somewhere right i think on your website you, could you post the link drama boy um to where your music is because it's sweet um so the infiltrator back back on back on come on focus up we're getting rid of directives uh cyber is gonna be synth news so the basic move for the infiltrator is covert entry. When you attempt to infiltrate a secure area alone, roll cool on a 10 plus, gain three hold, which you then spend to do the things. Um, yeah, there it is. Thank you, drum boy. Um, definitely check that out if you like some synthy cyberpunk stuff. Um, so covert entry is good, and that's also a good um, launch us straight into the game kind of move which is nice for this kind of situation, this sort of five to 10 minute demo. Um, then choose one, either a cat burglar or face. Um, this is more of a cat burglar character because I'm thinking more of the major. Um, and do I want anything else from the list? Probably not, that's two moves, even though one is kind of a subsidiary move, it's still a legit move yeah and the infiltrator is just fun anyway the infiltrator sells itself essentially i've like ever since the infiltrator the driver the killer and the hacker were the first four playbooks i made um and i was tracking over the first i don't know 10 or so convention games i played it who chose what um and the infiltrator despite at the time being one of the weakest playbooks um, in terms of the quality of the moves and the way that they led into the fiction it took a lot of work actually to get to where it is now um was consistently people played it and loved it because it's a cyber ninja that's it like you don't actually <laughs> i wanted the rules to be good for it but the rules didn't have to be good for it to work so uh I'm sure that will be chosen, um, especially with the ghost in the cell shell um, tag line. So cutting out those moves, 
that should be about the right size on the sheet. Synthetic Nerves is a little bit shorter than some of the other ones. Um, looking at the gear on the back, choose three weapons from sniper rifle, machine pistol, hand taser, silenced SMG, silenced semi auto pistol, monofilament whip, sword, shuriken, or throwing knives. Um, I feel like we have to go with monofilament whip. Um, I feel like we have to go with a silent semi auto pistol. Or should I go silent submachine gun? Uh, hmm. Let's take off the sniper rifle. Because we want these people to be getting down and dirty. Silent submachine gun. It is kind of more cyberpunk if you have something like that. That clearly requires more tech than is currently available. So let's cross off the silent semi-auto pistol. So we have a monofilament whip, silent submachine gun, maybe just a hand taser for the third one. They want to be sneaky. Oh, the media that inspired the sprawl. Well, um, Neuromancer and the entire rest of that trilogy, obviously. Um, Snow Crash, yes, but not as much. Um, uh, Burning, Burning Chrome, the William Gibson's book of compiled book of short stories, um, which includes the seeds for what became the Sprawl trilogy, uh, is probably in a condensed space. If you were going to read one thing that was, uh, that inspired the Sprawl, it's, it's the, it's that book. It's things like, it's short, short stories like Burning Chrome um, I forget what it's called, but the one where Molly Millions makes her first appearance, uh, the way that cyberware is treated in that story is critical to the way that I treat cyberware in the sprawl. Um, and then New Rose Hotel, uh, where, which is about people who have just screwed over a corp and are now getting totally hosed and they is telling the story of how they're getting hosed. <laughs> so unsurprisingly, <laughs> that's an influence. Um. If you want something more recent, I would definitely check out Necrotech by Casey Alexander. Um, I just read that relatively recently and there's a couple of patches in that where it's like, wow, that is pretty much in the exact same style as my intro text um, to the sprawl. So I was uh, like kind of surprised by that, but also, um, yeah, that is just straight up balls to the wall action with this badass cyberpunk woman on the hunt to find out why her identity is being like stolen basically um very cool uh there's a there's a list at the back of the book as well um of other ludographic things um movies and the like um yeah larry nom says he got burning chrome out of the library good call cool. Some of those stories are online, I think, but I don't know. The whole thing is worthwhile anyway. Um, okay, so hand taser, silence of machine gun, monofilament whip, then choose one from the others. Well, obviously that's a stealth suit. Don't even need to know what rest of that nonsense get out of here. Um, so that's the infiltrator. Plus two cool, plus one meat, plus one edge, plus zero synth, plus zero style, minus one mind. Synthetic nerves, covert entry, cat burglar, stealth suit, hand taser, silent submachine gun, monofilament whip. Done. Um, that is badness all the way down. Um, now here's a tricky one. Do I think I can do the hacker? And I guess the answer to that is obviously yes, because I did that on Plus One Forward, the podcast, uh, where I did a little um, AP, comic strip AP for um, for Rick. Um, Rich, sorry. Uh, so clearly I can do the hacker. I think if somebody wants to play the hacker, there's only one person. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, okay yeah yeah the more i think the more i look about this and i think about the problems the more i think no i can do this this is part of why like this is part of why i like running the sprawl because it does these things that you wouldn't expect a like a traditional game to be able to do um 
can cut back and forward really easily. So the hacker then, let's start with the moves. When you jacked into the matrix, you have access to the matrix moves. That's fine, but it's not very interesting. I might just cross that off the sheet. There's no need to say that. Um, console cowboy is going to be good. And I think that's it. I think so. I think I'll just give them the one basic move at the start. Um, and ignore the fact that you need the jack and move to get into the matrix because the only person getting into the matrix will be um, the hacker. Oh yeah, of course, duh, Johnny Mnemonic is the one where Molly is introduced. Uh, yeah, yeah, so Johnny Mnemonic, the movie, I also like actually, um, but the story, the original story in the Burning Chrome um, anthology, anthology collection is good. Um, right, so the hacker has the console cowboy, they have a neural interface with data storage. Um, do we think they should be better at taking out ice or um, uh, taking out other things? Uh, I'm just looking through for my other sheet okay so right so here it is so when you're a hacker you want to log in easily at synth you want to melt ice its edge compromise security its mind Jack out is cool. So what do we think would be a good combo? <laughs> yeah, so Drama Boy, I haven't seen the New Rose Hotel um, movie. I don't know how it compares to the story. The story is my shit. The story is probably my favorite single cyberpunk thing. Uh, I... I've, I've heard mixed things about the movie. Um, so if the movie does not rock your boat, despite having Christopher Walken in it, then uh, check out the story anyway, uh, because it might still rock your boat even if the if the movie doesn't. Um, right. So the hacker. Uh, why am I looking at the killer? well if they have so synth is used for two things so I should, should give them a high synth um yeah yeah let's do it high synth and then mind is compromised security so let's give them good mind and then let's give them good call and I'm kind of throwing them a hospital pass here by giving them bad edge. And they can have okay style and bad meat. Uh, because I'm going to throw ice at them. And if they have a lower edge, they're more likely to fail against the ice and then need to jack out. And that, I, I think that could be a cool scene. The like, everything's going fine. Everything's smooth. I'm getting my buddy in. And then all of a sudden, there's ice. Oh shit, I'm fucked. I've got to get out of this. Pull the plug. Pulling the plug works. Wow, that was close. That feels like a nice kind of arc um, for 10 minutes. Uh, so those are the stats I'm going to go for. I need to decide on their gear. So let's go for a performance deck. Because why why be defensive in a five to ten minute game? Um, I'm uh, drinking a resin IPA by Six Point in New York. By the way, it's pretty tasty. This one's been in our fridge for a while, so I feel like it's lost some of its hops, but it's still good. 
So a performance deck has one hardening, one firewall, two processor, and two stealth. So we're good for stealth. Um, processor means they can run two programs. I think I will cross off that bit about three programs from the list below. And I will just give them two programs and we won't bother with hot swapping programs during play. Um, I won't give them stealth because I like the idea of tracing them. I will give them eject because I will, I will, I like this kind of arc and giving them a good jack out option. Um, and I'll give them sift for searching for pay data in a secure database. I think that's a very hackery thing to do. So one hardening, one firewall, two processor, which they have sift for getting information and eject for getting out of trouble and they have stealth. So they shouldn't get blown up. So choose one weapon flechette pistol i hope they don't have to use it but if they do it'll be pretty funny because it probably means their apartment block is getting nailed uh and choose two let's give them an armored fridge and a microtronics workstation don't leave home full stop um right so do i have everything there the hacker has uh, one piece of cyberware has one move neural interface and then console cowboy Plus two synth, plus one call, plus one mind, plus zero style, plus zero edge, minus one meat. No directives, obviously. Gear, they have a performance deck with eject and sift. They have an armored fridge and a microtronics workstation. Cool, hack is done. <clears throat> okay, moving down the list. Killer. So... If the infiltrator is already a super fast um, sort of close combat -y ninja type with the monofilament whip, let's do something different for the killer. Killer starts with two cyberware. So let's have muscle grafts. Do we want to be close combat? Or do we want to be shooty? Or maybe a combination of both. Maybe neural interface and muscle grafts? No, you know what? Um, Let's look at the moves first. Custom weapon. Let's use a base and two options. I'm just going to scrap that actually for the killer and I'm going to give the killer um, Do I want to give the killer more machine than meat? Which would effectively give the killer no special move, but three pieces of cyberware. I think I will, because I think I want to give... I think I want a cyber arm with retractable blades. muscle grafts and neural interface with targeting suite and no moves so they're effectively taking more machine than wheat meat um but also the killer is also effectively taking chromed which gets into their two pieces of starting cyberware so they have three starting cyberware muscle grafts means they get to mix it up with synth instead of meat targeting suite means they get to mix it up with synth instead of meat so i'm going to put their synth at plus two um, I still am going to put their meat at plus one in case they shoot or use a weapon that isn't using the targeting suite. Um, their edge is going to be plus one as well for that like play hardball action. 
uh, cool plus zero, style plus zero, mind minus one. Be traditional there. Um, okay, and then looking at their gear, I'm scrapping their custom weapon, but they are there. Let's give them an automatic shotgun and a sword. And, 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 and body armor. Yeah, just give them body armor. Body armor, yeah, body armor. Not messing around. Body armor, automatic shotgun, sword. Cyber arm with implant. Oh, they've got retractable blades, never mind. I won't give them the sword. Uh, let me give them, as well as the automatic shotgun, a silenced machine pistol. Silence machine pistol, automatic shotgun, body armor, muscle grafts, neural interface with targeting suite, cyber arm with retractable blades. That's pretty, sounds, smells pretty street samurai to me. Cool. Killer is done. Um, I guess one thing that I could do as well is I could give them a name and then have them like make a new one if they want to. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm going to have the name list right there so they can pretty easily circle one. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe think about that. The pusher. So... Right. I think... So the pusher is... Like, I really like it as a playbook. But it's the least grabby in terms of... Um, uh, modern media... Uh, representations to grab hold of there was a uh there was a thread on twitter a few months ago yeah steel series says has a pusher in the game still trying to figure them out um yeah there's a thread where adam asked me what my kind of go-to uh um like media examples were of the pusher and i don't know if i really have one although having said that i just it just occurred to me that maybe the uh maybe the vampire musician in queen of the damned which is not very not really cyberpunk but the soundtrack is all right um is a good example of a pusher because the pusher is kind of taking the place of the rocker in Cyberpunk and in um, Shadowrun, which unsurprisingly were both two classes that were, or the rocker, rocker in Cyber, Shadowrun, rocker boy in Cyberpunk. Um, both two classes or archetypes that were kind of tricky to work out why they would be doing missions. Um, so in trying to work that out, I kind of boiled it down to this idea that this is a person who is trying to change people's mind. Um, so they often have this kind of uh, leadership or driving role in a campaign where they have something they want in a group that is often full of people who are more motivated by uh, money or by the like desire to escape or by vengeance or something like that. Um, so some of the coolest characters that I've had in games have been pushers. Um, it's often a place where people can really dump interesting, like tech ideas on them, uh, and have like a kind of, um, techno revolutionaries, like open source for everyone. Um, uh, techno utopian cultists kind of thing. Um, there's all sorts of interesting possibilities that can move the game in particularly 
like interesting and thoughtful ways uh but i don't know if they add much to this kind of like five to ten minute play so i feel like in for that they might be i mean it also includes gang leaders it's also a gang the ganger from from shadowrun like fits into this model Basic moves are vision thing and driven. Hmm. Ah, it's kind of cool, but I'm I'm not really feeling an immediate like grabby idea for how I might make that work. So I'm gonna leave that out for now. Um. Uh, so apologies Steel Sierra if, if you were hoping that I would um, drop some like pearls of wisdom which make the pusher easier to figure out in your game they really are very particular to how they're made um, but I find them very useful as as the MC I find them very useful as a point through which to channel missions um, and to make missions that either support their vision or to um, like as a foil to their vision they're an, they're an interesting and useful from a story perspective uh, kind of um, like a, a strong point of morality of some sort that you can use the rest of the game to reflect on. Uh, that's my, that's my uh, sort of broad and vague uh, advice slash thoughts. Um, Steel Seraph is a pusher, a fixer, a hunter, and a killer. Interesting group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very... So yeah, I, I would find in that group that probably the pusher is going to be the one who has uh, particular goals in terms of... Particularly kind of like high level goals. Like I want this kind of world and I'm going to push towards that. Whereas the fixer is going to be concerned with I want to make sure my drug business stays running and I deal with those problems. Um, it looks very much like a group that will be finding people and then setting the killer on them. <laughs> but it depends on entirely on how they're structured because all of them, all of the groups, all of the playbooks um, are set up a little bit so that you can build different types of play and characters with the moves that are there. Um, and you, there's usually something in there that you can use to make that character good in an action scene um the pusher has their gang even the reporter which i'm looking at now has war correspondent which is good for doing things in a combat environment even if it's not um i should have moved this onto the pusher um even if it's not actually fighting. So yeah, hopefully that was that was helpful. Um, so yeah, this I, I forgot to roll onto the pusher when I started talking about the pusher, but here is the pusher. Um, beginning a mission, I would scrap that one anyway if I was going to use a vision thing. When you have time and space for an emotional connection with someone, you passionately advocate for your vision. I feel like a scene. In a, in a five minute demo, a scene where the pusher, who probably doesn't have a well articulated vision, has to convince someone of their probably not well articulated vision is probably not going to be the kind of punchy demo that I want. Um, so yeah. Bye bye pusher. Uh, reporter. So the reporter if somebody has seen max headroom or red transmetropolitan is possibly grabby so from that perspective it's probably worth having because this is a comic convention i'm sure there'll be a number of people who have read transmetropolitan if you haven't read transmetropolitan uh let me just say that that also uh drama boy is well worth the look in terms of inspiration particularly for the reporter um the moves of the reporter as anyone who's familiar with both properties will probably notice immediately are sort of equal parts spider jerusalem from transmetropolitan and um 
Um, bu, 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 bu. I always forget his name. The actual reporter from Max Headroom, anyway. Uh, yeah. So, tricky thing is that they get three moves to start with. Living on the air is good. Knows from the story is at the start of a mission. Gather evidence. Gather evidence is kind of cool, but also kind of not. I think I can I just scrap both of those for this. I don't know if that's... Like the Nose for a Story Gather Evidence cycle, I really like, but I don't know if just including Gather Evidence by itself. It feels like it hints at too many other things. Edison Carter, yes, thank you, Edison Carter. Um, but Liven on the Air, for example, is something that Edison Carter does a ton in those in that show. Um, and then Filthy Assistance and Monstering are straight out of uh, Transmute Bolden. So, yeah, gather the evidence kind of hints at a lot of other mechanics in a way that might require me to explain what those mechanics are, so I'm just going to scrap that. Liven on the air is self-contained. 24-7 um, live feeds, chrome, filthy assistance. Filthy assistance might be a good one because it has the immediate transmetropolitan link. But actually, I think monstering, when you corner someone and hound them with questions to get to the bottom of a story. I can definitely see a cool little arc where the reporter like breaks into a place, gets somebody, monsters them, and then is busted and has to bust out live and on the air to get out. So I'm going to choose that one. Cyberware. Um, I think... I think I'm gonna go with Cyber Eyes with recording. Mm, let me look at the gear. Choose one weapon, hold out pistol, shoot pistol, hand taser, just gonna go hold out pistol. Choose one, armored clothing, encrypted communications equipment, show, choose two, recording equipment, glasses, trauma dooms. Okay, so let's give them recording equipment and armored clothing <clears throat> so let's give them cyber comms so that they can immediately kind of broadcast stuff if they need to so Liven on the air uses edge um, a reporter says that your edge and mine should be plus two or plus one. Uh, monstering uses edge as well. So let's just go edge plus two and mind plus one. It's good for reporting. Let's go cool plus one. Um, oh wait, let's go style plus one, cool plus zero, synth minus one. They're not good at giving orders in a technical environment. Meet plus zero. Um, cool. So that looks good. Those are both reasonably long moves in terms of the length of the, how many lines they take up on a page. So that might be tricky, but they only have three pieces of gear. So maybe that'll work. And the entire context sheet can get bumped off if necessary. Okay. So that's the reporter. What is next? Soldier. So soldier um, usually takes a little bit of explaining because soldier sounds like you're going to be a killer, um, but you're not. You're Hannibal from the A-Team. Um, or I guess uh, maybe, um, maybe Tom Cruise's character from Mission Impossible. He's often in a soldier kind of role. But you're definitely... Um, da, 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 Armitage or um, Turner from Turner from the second two in the Sprawl trilogy. 
So, got to have a tactical computer. When you assess in a tactical situation, hold one. Get them right into asking questions about the tactical situation and doing cool tactical things in any combat that emerges. Um, so the moves are, here's the plan. When you plan the mission, everyone who you assign a task gets a bonus and label it when the plan comes together. Roll edge. So this is one where a start of the mission move does actually work in this kind of context because I love it when a plan comes together you get two or three things that you get to spend to do something immediately so that's probably those are probably both good um, although actually I'm gonna scrap here's the plan because I want things to go wrong and showcase the move structure in this so that will mean that he won't be giving bonuses to everybody else who's involved they won't be giving bonuses so instead I will give them exit strategy because the idea that you can like just make a roll to get yourself out of trouble is a kind of cool feature. So they have a tactical computer for assessing in a tactical situation. They have, I uh, love it when a plan comes together. They have exit strategy, mind, edge, and assess. So the edge should be plus two or plus one. I'm going to give them plus two edge, plus one mind plus one meat for the fightings, plus zero call, plus zero synth, minus one style. Choose two weapons. Uh, heavy pistol, assault rifle, fragmentation, grenades, flashbangs. Let's give them flashbangs. And should we go assault rifle or heavy pistol? And then I think we'll go with Armored vest. Um, and goggles. We'll choose a couple of those. Um, yeah, let's go with assault rifle. It's a little bit more kind of like knows what they're doing military type rather than gunslinger um so that's the stats for the soldier that's the cyberware that is two moves that is all the gear all right the soldier is done um tech also tricky but probably quite good for immediately putting you into a kind of action space especially if the area of expertise is pyrotechnician yeah So let's do that. Let's take area of expertise, pyrotechnician. And then if somebody takes the tech, then we know what the what the five to ten minute job is. It's planting these explosives and blowing up this thing. The other one's mechanic requ would require drones, so that's going to take up space on the character sheet. Um, splicer, breadboarder, gunsmith. Are more the those are areas of expertise that are more useful around the mission or doing particular pre preparation things for the mission and then medic is good when the mission goes wrong but i don't expect uh while the mission while the five to ten minute mission might go wrong i don't expect it's going to be rescuable by a doctor um So that's their area of expertise. Um, storage is probably good. They can just start with some gear. Um, customizer I'll take off. Um, I might replace that with something else. 
Bypass. Bypass is good. Give them bypass. Bypass is when you attempt to subvert security measures by passing a locked door, disabling an alarm camera, or motion detector roll call. So that's a roll call, a roll mind. I gotta give them the implant tools for the cyberware. Um, let's give them plus two mind, plus one call. Plus one synth, plus zero meat, minus one edge, plus zero style. Yeah. Yeah. And for gear, we have a tool kit, tool kit and relevant gear, two weapons. Um, let's give them fragmentation grenades and a holdout pistol um, and then armor jacket a truck and that's all uh yeah Meh, hmm. maybe not the truck maybe the goggles give them the goggles instead and i'll probably choose like magnification and thermographic or something it's kind of techy so that's some gear, some moves, got a cyber arm, got some stats. The tech is done. This does unfortunately commit me to saying the word tech while I'm there. Um, but if nobody chooses the hacker, then perhaps I can get away with not saying the word dick. Huh, I feel like, did I? Did I not print out the back side of the driver? My maybe I'm saved from having to create the most complicated because I'd have to create a vehicle. I think I might have forgotten to do that, but hmm, interesting. I did just go to a convention, um, and I probably have one sitting on my shelf. Let me have a look. Here is a driver that I prepared earlier, probably. Um, yep, there we go. So much paper. All right, so the driver, all the way to the top. Alright, so the driver is, has the cyberware questions in the cyberware slot, which is unique. So those will go. Um, second skin and a car, that's probably it. I probably don't need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. Yeah. Yeah, just cross that off. I'll just do, like, hot shit driver is cool, and it'd be cool to have them have it, but, um, you just do that with moves. And it's more rolling. It's fine. Uh, so. Gear. Um. Custom cyberlinked vehicle. It's custom cyberlinked vehicle. Because I'm not choosing the drone option, I don't have to worry about drones, so I can just cross those off. Um, drones are cool. But if somebody, if one of the players is like a big Shadowrun player and wants to have drones, then I'll just give them a drone, and I can wing that. Um, it doesn't need to be on the sheet. That's fine. Uh, for vehicles, I will 
give. I think I'm going to really cut this down because the choosing a vehicle is a whole thing. Um, so I think I will give them the choice of a bike, a car, or a vector thrust panzer. I might just write that in the sheet as VTOL. Um, and I will give them the choice of racing military and luxury. Um, with all of those, I will, hmm, they would all have different, potentially, um, maybe I will just go with power two looks one weakness plus one, one armor, uh, for power. strength I'll give them the choice of fast quiet and rugged convenient in the first three for looks powerful sleek flashy And for weaknesses, fragile, cramped, no, not cramped, fragile, loud, and unreliable. And then they can just choose from a very more, much more restricted this is one I feel like where I will actually be playtesting this setup. I'm pretty happy with the way all of the rest of these cut down pregens look. Uh, I will have I will definitely pay attention to this. If somebody wants to play a driver, I'll be paying particular attention to how quickly it takes them to create their vehicle. If they very quickly just oh yeah totally it's a military motorcycle is rugged and powerful and loud, sweet done two seconds um but if they're agonizing over it then that will be something i might want to maybe offer like two or three completely pre-gened options i mean maybe i'll do that anyway i'll think about that i'll leave this as it is right now people like being able to describe their vehicles um i will give the driver a heavy pistol and synth leathers So, the car has good power, so while they're in the car, they're going to be pretty good anyway. Yeah, stats. So your cool should be plus two or minus one. Plus two or plus one, sorry. So cool plus two. This is some badass stylish driver. Let's go plus one style. Um... Plus one synth, maybe. Yeah, they don't have drones. Plus zero synth. I often use synth as a substitute stat for drones. Um, that I don't think that's in the rulebook anywhere, but that's something that I talk about a lot on Google Plus when people ask about it. Um, and it's something that I, I... I use synth as a kind of floating substitute stat for tech things a lot. Um, it doesn't have very many uses like in the rules as written. But it is a substitute stat as established by the cyberware rules. Um, and so I often deploy that in other situations where I think it might, like synth might be more relevant. So it's it's often one of my go-tos when I'm making custom moves on the fly. Um, edge, yeah, he's a badass driver. Uh, mind or meat? Meat plus zero, mind minus one. So neural interface with control module, Seeking skin, got a car, got some stats, got some equipment. Okay, so that's the driver done. So let me just look again at the pusher. If I just did the pusher up as a gang member, 
it would probably be pretty um, easy to sell. Give them some implant weaponry. Yeah, but the vision is tricky. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave the pusher aside. Um, just that little bit extra complexity and a little bit extra slowness, um, especially if I'm having trouble thinking of things for it now. Um, that's not a good sign for the situation when somebody comes up to the booth and is like, hey, I want to play this thing. Well, let me sell you on these characters and I don't know how to sell you on this one. <laughs> uh, in a succinct way. Um, okay, so I will be like kind of working these up. Um, as I said, the convention is on Saturday. Uh, if any of you are near Maine, you should totally come up to the Great Falls uh, Comic Expo. Say hi. Um, I will certainly have these in a state that I can print them off and play with them uh, by the end of the week. Hopefully I will also have them in a state where I can put a PDF of these online so that other people can use them as well. Um, uh, this week is very busy for me though, so I'm not sure whether that will happen. Um, I also have to start looking at uh, edits that I've received back for the next um, sprawl book which is the mission files which is 10 sort of pre-generated missions much in a similar style to the Kurosawa um, uh, extraction from the basic book uh, but with various tweaks that show various things you can do with the clocks and with other parts of the missions um, I have to start working on the edits for that um, hopefully this week uh the proofs for the november metric will be arriving uh hopefully in time for the convention but also so that we can finally have print on demand on drive through um the hold up on that has been basically uh me um but we have sorted out the uh the various things we were waiting on um and i finally ordered those last week and they shipped i want to say on saturday which drive through RPG usually gets stuff to you pretty reasonably quickly. Like I, if I am waiting more than a week, I'll be surprised. So, um, I should get that by the weekend. Um, so that would be cool. Um, I also over the weekend worked on a playtest packet for touched, which I sent out to some people who are going to be running it, uh, soon. We will probably also put that up online on Google plus, at some point in the near future i have to give it another read through um because i didn't have a like full-on chance to um proofread it to the extent that i wanted to before i sent it to the people who need it for planning their games at conventions soon um but if you are going to big bad con you can play it there uh there's gonna be a game uh, at gauntlet con the online convention i don't know how signups for that work i know the big bad con signups are underway uh, I don't know what the status of that game is, whether it's full or not already. Um, but I, if you're in the Bay Area, San Francisco, then you should totally check that out. Big Bad Con is one of my one of the best cons in America. Um, and I think I think that's all I have to say about that right now. So. Um, that those are the things that are coming up soon for um, the sprawl. Um, oh, Steel Sierra, if you're in the Bay Area, yeah, Big Bad Con, totally worthwhile. Um, I spend a lot of time in Los Angeles, so I have a special place in my heart, and also most of my friends uh, go to the Strategic Con cons conventions at LAX. Um, but in terms of, but like my friends aside, most of whom actually go to Big Bad Con as well. Uh, Big Bad Con is probably my favorite convention on the West Coast. Um, yeah, it's just 
and I would I would love to go, but it's just such a pain in the butt uh, to get there from Maine. Um, the the flights you have to go and the times you have to take flights and the times of the con and the times of my work do not line up very nicely at all. One day that will happen. It will some sort of mid semester break will align nicely with a uh, big bad con and a shining beam of light will descend from the heavens, uh, covering me with divine sploosh. And I will sign up for uh, Big Bad Con. It'll be magnificent, glorious. Um, so with that, I will um, say farewell to you all and uh, good night. Enjoy the rest of your evening um, or the evening that is just starting if you're on the West Coast. Um, and I will uh, see you next time I do one of these things. So thank you for watching. Um, thank you for... Uh, conversing in the chat and thank you for uh supporting the sprawl and playing the sprawl and may you all have great games whatever you play um and good night